I decided to take my bike to a Target and oh my god, I'm shaking right now. Look what I found. Oh my god. This is case H. Oh my god, this is the newest case. Oh my god. Over the past weekend, I decided to check a local Target of mine and I was very glad that I did because I found 2016 case H. That includes Bob Pulley, Hall Ingas, and Tubbs Pacer. Those are the only three technically new cars in the case, but Bob Pulley is the only new character. And if you'd like to see the contents of the case, they're in the description below. Now, just two days before I found this case, it was reported to be found in Central Florida and in Australia. So I was not expecting at all going into this target that I would find case H. Not one bit. I was more expecting to find Mater with duct tape, but I really was just maybe expecting the case with Mater with balloon or Holly Schiffwell with electroshock device. So I was extremely excited and surprised to see these hanging on the pegs and I swooped him up quickly and got out of there because man, I was so excited because barely anyone really has found this case yet. If you look on eBay at this moment, the only ones that you can purchase are from China. I haven't seen these come on eBay in the package yet. But nonetheless, let's get on with the review here. I'll be reviewing these three because they are the featured cars from the case. Now just a quick heads up, the next case after this one is case, I believe K it is, and the only new car in that case is Kasu Peru Hataru that concludes the cruise in Tokyo series. And then after that, there may be kind of a break in releases until July, and then there should be a new case with some other cars such as the two rusty cars and I believe Darla Vanderson. But now let's get on with the review here of Bob Pulley. So like I said, he is in the Cruise in Tokyo series and oh my gosh, I love his art. It is amazing. It conveys a lot of character. He's looking very happy. I just wish that his die cast looked a little bit more happy, but I love the art and I can't wait to get another one of these to keep in the package. I also really like the background street there. The only thing that takes away from the card is obviously the car's Daredevil Garage app logo. I really hope that goes away soon. He is number six out of nine in the series. And on the back here, it also has the instructions for the app. And I'm really starting to think that for the rest of the year, they will just have this on the back and not any other cars in the series. Now granted, we already know every single other car that will be released this year, basically. So it's not like it's a huge deal, but it looks nicer than that. I mean, that I just hate it. But moving on to the top here, just completely ignoring that, the description reads, before competing in the first World Grand Prix race, Lightning McQueen cruises the brightly lit streets of Tokyo. And there you can see an image of the Tokyo street. And there is Taie Deco Dura, who was released as a deluxe in the series in the beginning of the year. Now, if he had not been released before, he'd be my favorite of the series. But since he was, this guy is definitely my favorite. I just love the detail on him. And we'll talk about his detail a little bit more after I open them up. But now let's move on to the package of Hall Ingas, or more commonly known as Retread number 79. Now this is the last Piston Cup racer to be released for the year, at least as we know of, it does complete the series. I do have all the cars in the series now. Now one thing I really do like is that, as you can see, there is that red outline around the purple rim there. Unfortunately, that does not transfer onto the die cast. I wish it did. Mattel kind of does that with a few of their Piston Cup racers, but I love his art. It looks great. We've never seen it before. Very, very nice. He's in the Piston Cup series, number seven out of 14 now, even though it's just halfway through the series. All of the other ones have been released and have been found in a store. Of course, we just have the 
app instructions, an image of the Los Angeles International Speedway, and the description reads, the King Chick Hicks and Lightning McQueen compete in a tiebreaker race to win the Piston Cup Championship. Now, as I've said many times before, this is very inaccurate because obviously Retread does not participate in that race along with most of the other racers in the series, so Mattel should really correct that, but they haven't. So here we have Tubbs Pacer, who is a Lemon, of course, he is the head of the Pacer family in the Oil Rig Getaway series. Now, I have stated this before, but Tubbs Pacer never even appeared at the Oil Rig Getaway. He, this is at the beginning of the movie, and he does not appear until a solid hour into the movie, so it's just kind of disappointing. They did the same thing with Vladimir Trunkov, but at least they are lemons, so for most people, I mean, they'll just assume that they did appear, but technically they did not. He is number one out of eight in the series. And on the back here, nothing too exciting. We do see Finn McMissile there, bursting out of an explosion. The description reads, the lemons think they've trapped Finn on an oil rig, but the secret agent plummets into the ocean for a dramatic escape. Now, one car that I'm extremely looking forward to getting is Jerome Ramped. Now, I talked about him in my Case G video because he is in Case G, but unfortunately, I've been not able to get him yet, so when I do, I will review him immediately. But now, let me open Bob Pulley here and we'll take a look at all three of these loose. Two quick things that I wanted to mention. First off, Bob Pulley did not have tape around the blister, which is awesome, but the other two did, which is not awesome. So it really is a hit or miss situation on which cars have tape and which ones do not. I'm really hoping by around June or July, this tape gluing issue is completely resolved and all of the cars are tape free because I am really not liking the tape. It gets bulky on some of the cars and even though it is applied by a machine, machines make mistakes and sometimes the tape just doesn't look good at all. And sometimes though, it's rather discreet and not noticeable. But nonetheless, let's move on to the review here of Tubbs Pacer. Now, he was originally released as a single in 2013, and then again in 2014, both times in the Lemon series. So the cards are basically identical. And also in 2014, he was released in a two-back with Tolga Trunkov, but it was not just regular Tubbs Pacer, it was Tubbs Pacer with paint spray. Now, this is obviously when Ramon paints him with the pink spray there just kind of in the fence because they had that kind of London brawl there. Now we'll just be focusing on regular Tubbs Pacer for today. He is one of my favorite lemons, a really classic paint job here, that kind of two-tone brownish orange and then kind of a beige white. Now on the hood there it says Pacer. Very, very nice detailing. I really do like him. Like I said, he's got that mean, grumpy expression because, of course, he is a bad guy. Head of the Lemon family appeared at that meeting in Porta Corza and then went over to London and eventually was captured by the London military force. Now, on the side here, he does not have road hug on the tires, which is quite interesting. He does kind of have that mouth plate there, should I say bumper plate, that separates the body from the base. Now, on the new version, I did not spot any differences between the two of them at all. It looks like he still has that bumper plate right there. I can kind of still see the line. So it looks like they just kept the same model, didn't make any changes, which is not a bad thing. Now on the back here, his license plate actually reads 705BN. Now I said actually because a lot of Pacers had the license plate reading Fishbowl because that's the nickname of the Pacer because they kind of look like a fishbowl from behind. And I mean, they do. 
but even though one car has that license plate, which probably should be Acer, the rest of them should not. Because as you can see here, we have Acer, and his license plate reads Fishbowl without the I or the O. But moving back to Tubbs Pacer, he has the Pacer text right there and the AMC logo on the left side. So pretty good detailing. Again, he's one of my favorite lemons. And we also have some base detailing as well. They do have to credit Pacer on the base there, along with some other legal jargon. And there you have the date stamp right there. Now just compared to Acer, they are of course the same model because they are both Pacers. They just have different colors and expressions. And Tubbs does not have any of that dirt detailing because he doesn't really get into many brawls or fights unlike Acer does. Very, very nice. I'm glad that they re-released them. I'm just kind of feeling like, I don't know, I feel like J. Kirby Gremlin or Victor Hugo would have made a better re-release because he's been released twice in a row now. So I feel like, I don't know, that's just my personal opinion. But now moving on to Hall & Gas, which is his actual name. His sponsor is, of course, Retread, and his number is number 79. Now, this is going to be a quite rare Piston Cup release because it's his first plastic tire single release. He was only released as a plastic tire in a launcher and in the motor speedway of the South set and he was released as a single rubber tire for the Kmart event in 2009. Now I managed to get the launcher, but it is pretty beat up now. I didn't take care of it. I kind of played with it when I was a little kid. But I do have the plastic tire version here. Now the only difference between the new version and the old version, which is the one I have here, is the fact that the new version has the flat eye variant. Now I've talked about this many times before in my videos, but really the difference means that instead of having depth between the eye space there and the eyelids, it's completely flat. Now I assume this is the cut cost, but I don't really mind at all. I've really kind of expressed this before that it really looks cleaner to me and it doesn't make that big of a difference. Now on the hood here, we can see his retread logo and a pretty cool so sl slogan said roll on. I really do like that, it's pretty catchy. And now apparently this is tire deodorant, which is pretty clever on Disney Pixar's part because tires are basically the limbs of cars because they're moving with them. And therefore, I mean, I guess they would get sweaty and that's where you'd put your deodorant. So pretty clever on their part. Now he has this purple, red, and white scheme going on. And I actually think it's more of a lavender color than purple. Now on the side here, you can see his sponsors. And now, like I said, it's not it's supposed to have that red trim going around the purple rim, but it's just completely purple there, which is not terrible. It looks all right, but I feel like a little bit more red would really kind of break up the complete purple color. He also kind of has this purple zigzag pattern as well. Now on the back here, we can see the retread logo, a big red bumper right there, pretty nice. And just above that, again, the retread logo with the roll on slogan. So that is all for retread himself. He does have the grill logo up here. And he did appear in the crash at the beginning of the Cars movie. Now let's move on to Bob Pulley. And just be ready guys, I'm going to be praising this guy for the rest of the video because I just really, really like him. Now let's start off by just looking at him and then we'll move on to the cars that are similar to him. Now he is a Tokyo taxi and taxis from Tokyo do look different than the typical ones that you may see here in the United States, London or Australia. They are pretty colorful, especially on this one here, it is completely in kind of a turquoise blue, and he has a white stripe on his left and a red stripe on his right. It's just kind of the typical thing here that just kind of so people can signify that this is a taxi and know where to go. Now, like I said, I said people there, and I really should have said cars, because why would a car need a taxi? Now, let's think about this for a second. A taxi takes people from one place to another. 
Now, even though cars can't literally fit into other cars, they could follow them. So, in my opinion, taxis in the cars universe are guides and they are used for other cars to follow them to their destination. Now, I don't really know how this makes sense because you're still paying for your gas and the mileage, but I don't know, maybe if you just don't know how to get there, it's kind of a stretch, but that's my logical explanation. Now on the side here, he's got a checkered board stripe going across. Again, probably another signification to be a taxi. And he has a bunch of other cool decals on the side here. He's got city taxi logo right there, which is surprisingly in English because he's a Tokyo taxi. And he's got some other decal stamps here that are in Japanese characters. It says 139 there. It has an A there. That might be certification to be a taxi. And we can also see some detailing from the tiresome upsplash that happened right there. You can see the dirt detailing. Very, very nice. Now on the back here, we can see the white mosaic design that he is supposed to have, but Jesse Hollander is not. We'll get into that a little bit more in a second here. On the back here, we can see his license plate that reads 02-85, some Japanese characters surrounding it. And there you go, you can see that same stamp that was on this side right here that says 139 with some Japanese characters. Now right here, we have some more stamps, the A stamp again, and then that stamp, it looks like it has a purple car on the front there. I do not know what that black says, it's very minuscule, but I would assume it's some sort of taxi certification. Now on the top here is where I really do like him. You can see that it says City Taxi in kind of that light bar there. And now in the movie, it actually does light up and that's a pretty cool feature. Now he did appear cruising the streets of Tokyo. He was to the left of Sarge, Sarge's left. And I mean, he made a very slight appearance, but his expression's pretty spot on with the movie. The card back is a little bit more off, even though I do like it more. Now he also has those two light bars that are sticking up out of the roof there. So now that we've taken a look, taken a look at Bob Pulley here, he also has these side view mirrors here to see backwards. I will show the other variations, or I should really say other models that use his body. Now we've gone over this before in my video with Jesse Hollander. I really wanted to detail how he is the same model here as Ido San, which is right here, and Trent Croto. These are all blue Tokyo sedans. All of them appeared in Tokyo in the Cars universe. Now my favorite is definitely Bob Pulley. Now he is actually technically a different model because of the fact that he has the light bar up here, so that means there are indentations in the body, so makes him different from these three right here. Now, as you can see, you can spot minor differences between all three of them already, but these three in particular are very, very, very similar. But if you'd like to see my in-depth review of Jesse, you can check out the description below. But I just wanted to talk about Jesse real quick because he also has the same back window as Bob, which is that white mosaic design right there. Now, it is supposed to be just kind of a clear black window like this one right here. But Mattel screwed up. Yep, that's not really something that happens that often. Yeah, I'm totally joking. That kind of happens quite a bit, which is a little bit disappointing. But nonetheless, I love Bob Pulley. He's probably one of my favorite cars out of the 2016 line so far. So good job, Mattel, on him. And let me know which one of these is your favorite. Do you prefer Tubbs, Pacer, Hall Ingas or Bob Pulley. Now that might be a pretty easy question for you, and if it is, then answer who is your favorite from Cruising Tokyo series this year. My favorite's Bob. So I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Bye now.